Kyle, given last year's postseason and this year's regular season, how much different do you feel today than you would have a year ago entering a game two start? Uh, definitely feel a lot more confident for sure. Um, you know, I think I learned a lot from last year, um, and then I've continued to learn more about myself this year. So um, I feel like I know who I am. And um, yeah, it's just a whole lot more confident. Um, I think even last in the World Series, there's still a couple, you know, still a couple questions, you know, like, hey, can I still do this? And after I had my first outing, I did. And I feel like from that point on, I've just kind of continued to build off that. And, you know, here we are. Justin. Kyle, if there was somebody, a pitcher now, who was, who was in the position that you were in last year and maybe had some doubts or didn't know if they would make it to where you are, what would your message to them be? I think that you're just never as far as you think you are. Um, you know, I, I feel like I was, when I was struggling, I was, you know, got to as low as I did. I feel like where I'm at now was forever away. And really it wasn't. It was just, you know, a couple tweaks here, um, doing some mental work. And next, you know, a couple months, Kind of go by, I kind of get my footing back, pitch well in AAA, um, got the opportunity in the World Series, and you know took that in the spring training, and here here I am now. So um, I, that's what I think it is. It's just you're never that far away. You're always that one little tweak, um, whether it's you know physically, mentally. I think for, for me it was both um, um, from a turnaround. So I think you just, just got to keep pushing. That's really it's pretty cliche, but um, it's still pretty true. Just keep going. Um, you're not that far. And then how much of a point of pride is that for you to be one of those turnaround stories people can look at? It is cool. Um, you know, I wish I would, I, I would have got it going a lot sooner and I didn't have to do this. But um, for me, it just, you know, makes me proud. Um, a lot of good people in my life that helped me get there, family, friends, coaches. So, you know, I really didn't do it myself. Um, so I can't take really all the credit or really any of the credit. Um, but, yeah, it's just it's very satisfying to know that um, I made the turnaround that I did. A kind of a bigger picture, you've been a part of each one of these clubs that's won the division over the past five years. You've played with a lot of these guys coming up through the minor leagues. What has this journey been like for you guys to go from young players to world champions last year and once again trying to do that again this year? It's it's really fun. Um, I feel like I've gotten to know a lot of these guys You know, since I first – um, you know, got drafted by the Braves. So to kind of come up with a big, big group of them. And um, it's been a lot of fun just because we're a very close knit group. And, you know, the guys that, you know, we've acquired or gotten over the years or gotten this year, I feel like have just fit right in. I feel like I've known him forever. You know, I could kind of point to Matt Olson. I feel like the second he got in the locker room, um, I feel like he just fit right in. And, you know, he's just a great guy. So I think that just says a lot about, um, you know, what Alex, what Alex tries to do here. And that's, you know, get good guys, good character. And um, I feel like that really helps us grow as a team. And um, I feel like we should have a lot more fun because of it. Mark? Do you feel like a pitcher has the advantage when facing a division uh, rival in the postseason? I feel like it can go both ways. Um, you know, uh, we know them, but they know us at the same time. So it's just, it really comes down to who executes better, I think. Um, you know, ideally I execute better than they do, but um, you, you never know. So uh, they're a really good team, got a really good lineup, and um, you know, a lot of a lot of experience over there. So um, it's going to be a tough challenge for sure. But you know, just kind of have to stay within my plan and um, you know, uh, control what I can control, and kind of whatever happens from there happens. Jesse, another one of your teammates got locked up yesterday. I'm sure you're happy for him. I mean, what's that like among you guys? Um, it, it feels really unusual in this day and age. I, I'm, I'm sure you guys kind of feel the same way it what, what's the chatter like among teammates when this keeps happening with this organization I think it's just really exciting you know knowing that um, you, you have a chance to play with guys for a long period of time I feel like that that's a really important thing that sometimes I think it's undervalued um, so I think knowing that there's a good core group who's going to be here for you know a long period of time and and again it's a lot of high character guys great people so I think that that you know is a big part of it but it's it's really exciting to to be a part of the Braves and knowing that there's a good core group for a long period of time. So, um, and we're just so happy for everybody that's gotten these, uh, that gotten these extensions and, you know, it's it, more than deserving. So um, we're just, it's just a really, really exciting time. Anytime somebody else, uh, you know, can uh, get locked up here for a long period of time. Kelly. Um, Snick kind of told us about Tyler Matzik a few minutes ago. Uh, I know he was such a huge part of the run last year. And Kyle, you know how big bullpens are in the postseason. Um, from a year ago to now, how has Dylan Lee been able to kind of solidify himself as a guy who can take over some of those high leverage innings and help out? Yeah, um, yeah. for me, it started uh, when I first got to know Dylan last year in AAA. And um, 
we were at the at the time we were at the alt site and he was still in spring training and he was one of the few pitchers that came up to join us and you know his first outing he was incredible um, I think he struck out the side and got all types of swings and misses so that was kind of when you first realized like this guy's pretty good and then he just kept doing that outing after outing after outing um, got he's gotten called up this year and has continued to do that so uh, mentally he's just tough as nails I think um, it, the game just doesn't phase him um, it, 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 he slows it down really well um, he trusts his stuff you know it's not overpowering it's you know 90 to 93 but um, he commands it really well and he throws it with just a little bit of a little bit of extra to it, I guess, and he's got a great off-speed, great off-speed slider and changeup. So he knows his game, he trusts it, and he's just uh, he's fearless. And I think that's why he's been able to, you know, pitch the way he has and pitch in those high leverage innings. Justin, uh, as a teammate, how much do you just kind of hurt for Tyler and what he's going through in this time? Yeah, it sucks, man. He's he's such a huge piece to this team, um, not just on the field but off the field too. He's a great teammate. Um, you know, he's his experiences. Uh, I think. Or has helped me a lot, just knowing kind of what he's gone through um, and how he's been able to come back. So, you know, for me, I, I've learned a lot from from Matic. So, um, it just you really hate it for him. It sucks. Um, you know, hopefully, he can get better, get better soon. But um, yeah, it sucks. You know how much fun he had in the postseason last year. He was a ton of fun to watch every time he took the mound. It just felt a little bit different. So, you know, you hate it for him, but um, you know he's still going to be play a part of this he's just going to continue to be a good teammate and you know he's going to you know kind of be there for us so um, he may not be playing but he's still going to make an impact for sure Maria maybe you've said this throughout the year but besides confidence what adjustment can you point to that's kind of gotten you to this point um I made some mechanical changes that's kind of been a big one um, and I've also just started to use my curveball more um, so really kind of those two paired together has then kind of allowed me to I, I, my commands gotten better um, all of my stuff numbers wise has improved so it's really just kind of a mix of a lot of that together, and which has allowed me to attack more, um, throwing more strikes instead of you know walking guys or falling behind. And um, and then I think on the middle side of it, I've just learned to trust myself and um, understand who I am as a pitcher. And I've really bought into the one pitch away. That's something uh, you know I've worked with our mental performance coach Zach Sorensen. Um, you know, one pitch, this pitch. Um, it, it's it's something that it's really hard to do, um, just because you, it's easy to kind of fall into the trap of looking too far ahead. So I think whenever the game starts to speed up on me, that's what I really buy into and knowing that you're one pitch away from a, you know, a double play, a pop up and out, whatever it may be, or just a strike. So that, that's been the big part for me mentally um, that I've bought into pretty heavily. And, you know, we still work on that a lot and talk about it a lot. So kind of the, the marriage of those two things is, has really been big for me. Gabe. Kyle, what makes Zach Wheeler such a great pitcher? Everything. <laughs> Uh, he, he commands really well. He obviously throws really hard. Great slider. Um, he has a big presence. He attacks the strike zone. Um, he's just, he's, he's a lot of fun to watch pitch, but you hate facing him. So, um, you know, I really can't say enough good things about him. Um, you know, I feel like we've gotten to see him pitch now four or five times this year, and I feel like he's looked good every time. So, um, we're, you know, obviously we got to worry about tonight, but, um, you know, it's going to be a grind against him tomorrow, too. He's got great stuff, and, um, it's going to be a battle. Maria. Did you watch much of the wild card series? Not really. Um, I, I watched bits and pieces. I tried to watch all the games when I could, but, you know, I tried to really enjoy some time with my wife and, you know, play golf and uh, just enjoy a little bit of time off, help recover and get back. So I was able to watch, you know, bits and pieces, but, um, you know, I tried to just in, you know, enjoy those off days and kind of hit the middle reset a little bit. Of the bits and pieces that you did watch, did you find any like draw any inspiration from the pitching performances at all? Um, it's okay if you didn't. Yeah, I, I don't think so. I mean, it's there's a ton of talented pitchers that pitch in that wild card, so um, I feel like it's. I don't know if I'm necessarily surprised with how well a lot of those guys pitch because they are so good and so talented. So, um, but anytime you know you're not playing that team and you see someone go out there and pitch pitch really well. Um, it's fun to watch and I think it's just great for our game to see guys go out there and compete and um, go deep into a ball game and give their team a chance to win. So um, yeah, it's, it's like I said, as long as it's not against your team, it's fun to watch and um, I guess you can get a, get a little bit from it. Ethan? Uh, as, as a rookie, how impressed have you been with Spencer Strider and how important is it to get him back for the NODS? He just has a huge presence. Um, I hope I'm not butchering this. I think he's 22 years old, but you know, it's like he's 
30. Um, he's just very mature. Um, he's an old soul. Um, he knows his game really well, which is attack with the fastball and then, you know, pitch off that. So, um, and he has a big presence. Um, it's just, it's hard to say enough good things about him because you, I think you really do forget that he's a rookie sometimes because of how well he pitch, how well he pitches, how much he attacks. And, uh, just the year he's had, he's already broken, you know, however many records in his rookie year, which is kind of hard to even, you know, fathom that someone at his age has been able to do that. So um, you can't say enough good things about him and, you know, getting him back healthy and, you know, back on the roster is huge for us. And it's definitely a big, definitely a big pickup. Um, so, you know, uh, excited to, excited to watch him do his thing. Kelly? You good? I doubt you have to say anything because it seems like every big moment your rookies have, like you just said, mm -hmm. Strider have showed up and um, competed. But if you had any advice for Michael Harris, who's stepping on the stage for the first time, or Vaughn Grissom, what would it be? Yeah, I feel like it's just staying within yourself. You know, at the, it is a it is a bigger game, it's higher stakes. But at the end of the game, at the end of the day, it is still just another baseball game. So I think the you know it's hard to really buy into that just because the stakes are so much higher but um it's it's what it is so it's just got to stay within yourself um you know i i think a big thing is you know you don't necessarily have to be the hero you know just finding a way to you know make a play get on base you know and then the big hits will come the big plays will come just because you know he has naturally gifted talent natural ability that's going to take over um so he just needs to you know let that ability shine i think any last ones for kyle all right, thanks for coming in. We'll see thanks. you tomorrow. Appreciate it.